Hello and good evening. Welcome to Anupali. Hi. I'm happy to welcome you to another edition of the program. Your government continues to tackle head-on the various challenges associated with managing a year-long pandemic. The economic and social impact of COVID-19 pandemic is ever-evolving, and we have had to devise effective strategies to contend with the fallout. Our prevailing concern has always been the well-being and welfare and safety of all our citizens. And at the cabinet level, we have reviewed some of the approved protocols to facilitate travel for fully vaccinated people, uh, tourists and citizens alike. Also, a special dispensation has been approved for cruise passengers, as we expect our first cruise call in Dominica on June 6, 2021. To speak about the new conditions that now apply, I have invited the Honorable Dr. Irvin McIntyre, our Minister for Health, Wellness and New Health Investments, and Honorable Dennis Charles, Minister for Tourism, International Transport and Maritime Initiatives. Good evening, colleagues, and welcome again to Anupali. I hope you have been having a wonderful weekend. Yes, it Dr. Has Mark? Been, yes, it has been, PM. It's been quiet. Uh, good weekend. Good quiet, weekend. but good. Yeah. Dennis? Good evening, PM. You know, we went on a very challenging hike on Saturday, but I'm recovering. You're you covering. And I'm happy to be here on Anupali. Oh, welcome. Now, let's get straight into the discussion <laughs> because there's great anticipation in, in the public um, on the new protocols uh, which we uh, are putting in place uh, where vaccinated people are concerned. Now, Dr. Mark, last week, for example, our COVID numbers were at zero. So we went up to zero and there was a huge um, sigh of relief and, and even celebration in, in some quarters in the country. Uh, this week, uh, we have on record four active cases. I believe we got two um, yesterday or, or, or day about. Uh, can you bring us up to date on the current status? Okay, well, PM, you are correct. Um, we had two ca uh, zero cases last week, but now we're back up to four active cases. But um, the good thing about these four active cases, these are cases that we've got through the five-day testing, cases from quarantine. So these are not cases that we've gotten from the community. These are from the quarantine. And, um, but we, always, we remain at zero deaths, which is important for us. And um, in terms of the total confirmed cases we've had since we began last year, just 180, and we only have four active now. But as I said, these four, we got through the five-day quarantine. So we have no community cases as such. And importantly enough, we are actually zero cases under investigation now. So we don't have anyone for contact tracing. So that, that's our present status as it stands. You know, and how many people have received their first dose of the vaccine and the second? Okay, our first dose of um, our vaccine is 9,215, mm -hmm. and our second dose is 14,328. So that is, if you ask me, I think we've done pretty well in that regard. So nationally, we're actually at about 41% um, vaccination of our population. Awesome. Yes. Now, clearly, we have done well uh, as a country uh, to manage COVID-19 and to keep our numbers down. Uh, we have also had significant success with first uh, securing the supplies of vaccines for our citizens and then administering um, these, these vaccines. Uh, because of this uh, success, and we want to thank all those involved, the, the health professionals and the frontline people, and of course um, our own citizens and, and residents in our country. Uh, because of this success, we have decided to accept cruise calls here uh, from this June. Uh, we have also reviewed our entry protocols. Um, I think, Dr. Mark, people are eager to know uh, what are the new protocols in place for persons who are fully vaccinated? Because people are saying it, it must worth something <laughs> to, to, to get vaccinated. Okay, but first, um, PM, I think we should clarify what we mean when we say someone is fully vaccinated. Yes, so yes. What, what we really mean is that the person have had their two doses, if the vaccine is one for two doses, in the case of Johnson & Johnson, it's one dose, one dose. Secondly, the vaccine has to be approved by the Ministry of Health 
and the WHO. That means the WHO would have to have given the vaccine EUL, that is emergency use listing. And thirdly, the second dose should be a minimum of two weeks before we can consider the, I mean two weeks after, before we can consider the person to be fully vaccinated. And if at all they have not, for the, and then the person who is not vaccinated means you haven't been vaccinated, or they have no valid proof or evidence that they are vaccinated, or they also maybe, if they have received the vaccine that it's not approved by the WHO, we're not going to consider you as fully vaccinated. And um, there must be at least two weeks after your second dose. So if you have what, had one dose, we will not consider you as vaccinated. So we have criteria for who is fully vaccinated and who is unvaccinated. And we have to consider the, the vaccines that we're going to accept from the WHO, which is, has had EUL, that is the Pfizer, the Moderna, the Janssen, the AstraZeneca, and the Sinopharm. And importantly enough, both the Sinopharm and the AstraZeneca are recommended by the WHO, and these are the vaccines that we use in Dominica. Okay. Now, what about disembarkation? What are the new protocols in place uh, for the disembarkation phase? So, well, the firstly, the if you're vaccinated, you must have filled out the questionnaire online, and that has to be done within 24 hours. After you fill out the questionnaire online within 24 hours, you have to upload your negative PCR test, which must be done, the swab must be done between 24 to 72 hours. Then after this, if at all you've had COVID before, then you have to upload information records to state or to prove that you've had COVID before. And then, obviously, then you will be given the approval that you can travel to Dominica. And this you'd have to provide or you'd have to um, present to the airline counter prior to boarding your flight to Dominica. So as I said, your, um, fill out your question within 24 hours, your negative PCR within, so I'll take within 24 to 72 hours, proof of vaccination, upload your, if at all you've had COVID before, and then all of this presented to the counter or the airline agent, and then you can take your flight to Dominica. So you, you get into Dominica, you get to the, uh, you, you disembark the aircraft. Are we going to be testing vaccinated people at the airport as we have been doing? No. That's the important part. Mm -hmm. If you've had a vaccine before, you're fully vaccinated and you fit the criteria of someone who's fully vaccinated, you will not be tested at the airport. Mm -hmm. There are certain atypical cases where if you're symptomatic, which I will explain later, mm -hmm. then we can do a rapid antigen test. But if you're fully vaccinated, you don't go through this testing before because in any case, we've removed the antibody testing and the antigen has replaced it. So if you come in, you're fully vaccinated, no, you will not be tested at the airport. Mm -hmm. But at what stage of you being in Dominica, you get, you get um, tested? Okay. That, so, that, that is in regards to the fully vaccinated person. Correct. So if you're fully vaccinated, you're not tested at the airport, what is being done is that obviously you go through the normal, usual stuff. You have to wear your mask and there must be physical distancing, except sure they'll ask you a few questions as is done normally. But you will have to go to your hotel which is, has to be a certified safe in nature property or a government quarantine facility. At these facilities on day two, a PCR test will be done and you'll get your result within 24 hours. So what it means, a minimum of two days. So actually, if you're done on the second day, you might actually go home on that same second day or latest next morning. So the days of five and six and seven days in quarantine are over for fully vaccinated um, travelers. So we're moving from a seven day to a three day, or two days, but two days. But at, at, at worst, uh, you go home on the third day. Right, yeah. morning of the third day. So there's no more five and six and seven day as we used to have before. No, that is out. And for the those who are not fully vaccinated, the protocols remain the same. Those who are not fully vaccinated, the protocols remain the same. You get to your certified safe in nature property or you get to the government quarantine facility and then on the fifth day we have you tested you for pcr so that means you might just go home on the sixth day but if you're lucky on the fifth day but you might just go home on the sixth or the seventh day mm -hmm. which makes a big difference compared to the two two and a half days yes. so you don't get back you don't get tested at the 
at the airport if you're fully vaccinated anymore. No PM. And then you go to the Safety Nature Property Government uh, quarantine facility and you get tested on the second day of arrival in Dominica. That's correct. And once you're cleared, you're allowed to move freely. That is correct, PM. Okay. So the, 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 there's, these are significant changes um, yes. to the, between uh, what we have now and what has been uh, put in place for fully vaccinated people. Oh, it makes a very big difference, PM. Now, we were speaking some time ago about this high-risk alert. C can you share this issue with the public? Yes. So, if granted, you may have vaccinated um, travelers and non-vaccinated mm -hmm. travelers, but then you might also get a traveler who is a high-risk alert. That means maybe the traveler had a fever, or he's been complaining of loss of taste, or he may have been some headache, or he could have been working in a COVID hospital, or he could have been related to a COVID-19 patient. So all this gives us a little red alert. And in that case, we would quickly do a rapid antigen test. Mm -hmm. And then if the antigen test is negative, then he proceeds to his normal two-day. If the antigen test is positive, then we'd have to isolate him. So that is the case, that's the atypical cases where you can have the high-risk alert. And uh, we've made allowances for that. This is exactly where the antigen test comes in. So if we have a, a, a alert, we will definitely be highly precautious and do a rapid antigen test. And as I said, the alert would be the person has symptoms, whether it's the fever or the headache or the loss of taste, or whether just by association working in a COVID hospital or related to a COVID-19 patient, that gives us a little red alert and we'd be highly precautious and do a rapid antigen test. No. Just to for some clarification of the public, Dr. McIntyre, uh, we have a number of people who are considering traveling for the, for the vacation. You know? um, teachers in particular, I know they've received their single bubble and their back pay and so on, and, and they have to travel um, out and so forth. Um, these new quarantine requirements would also apply to them? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Assuming that they are vaccinated, if yes, it would vaccinated. apply to them, definitely. So they go to the United States, they, they're fully vaccinated, they come back and they will have to be subjected to the two-day quarantine. To the two-day quarantine, yes. Yeah. And of course, um, these protocols will continue to be reviewed um, as we go along. As we go so, along. So they may very well change um, to less restrictive uh, measures down the road. Correct. Uh, as we as we now seeing the evolution of those changes with fully vaccinated people. Yes, and uh, PM, we've always had a pragmatic approach, and is really what works. We've seen, <coughs> we take note of the data, the scientific yeah. data, and we've seen the other best practices, and we've seen the mistakes of other countries. So we've we've been very pragmatic in that regard, and we'll review it on the thirty first of May. Yeah. Now. What protocols are in place, though, for travelers who are symptomatic or, uh, as we indicated earlier, carry a, a, a high risk? Of, did these people, as you say, they go to, did they be tested at the airport? Yes, we do a rapid antigen. So these antigen. people be tested at the airport? Definitely. Definitely. And then um, if it comes out positive, so, they'll be placed into isolation? Precisely. Okay. So if it's negative, all well and good. But if it's positive, then immediately we do a PCR. Yeah. So we put you in isolation, we do a PCR, and just to be on the safe side. If the PCR comes negative, all well and good. But if it's positive, yeah. then you stay in isolation. Yeah. I just want to say to the, to the viewing and listening public, you know, I, I'm taking my time with these questions so that we, <laughs> we, we get the information, you know, um, because it's very important information. And, and because there have been a dramatic shift uh, with the protocols, I wanted to ensure that we, we, we get the information in a manner in which we can uh, consume it. Um, now, Honorable Charles, let's talk about um, how all of this applies, though, to cruise ship visitors. Um, what standards are in place before they arrive here and upon arrival? Now, um, let us just, why do you think of the, the response? Now, Dr. Mark, with regards to cruise passengers, uh, what are the protocols in place for them? Okay, well, for cruise passengers, well, even prior to coming here, 
even the cruise lines would want them to have their vaccination done. So they would have to have vaccination. Mm -hmm. And um, apart from that, we must get the declaration from the ship at least four hours before they dock here. Mm -hmm. That is all the medical records of every passenger on that cruise line. Mm -hmm. So within four hours, we know everyone who's coming, their medical condition, and we have can ascertain that, yes, they vaccinated already, and in terms of symptoms, so we have that all covered. Mm -hmm. When they land, well, obviously, the normal, all the usual public health and social protocols must be in place, etc., and their temperature screening and all the different, mm -hmm. the protocols have to be enforced there. Mm -hmm. And then after this, we have a series of other measures which the Honorable might explain regarding our different tour guides and the different measures being put in place and the different packages and so forth and our cruise village, which Honorable Charles can okay. elaborate on. Yes, Honorable Charles, yes. Yeah. So, um, we asked the question about um, cruise passengers and how all of this applies um, to them. Uh, what standards are in place uh, before they arrive here and upon arrival? Um, to continue where Dr. Mark left off, one of the key things is that we have to notice that um, Barbados will be in the home port for the restart of cruise tourism in the summer. So all cruise passengers would have to meet the entry requirements of Barbados, which is negative PCR within 24 to 72 hours. Um, um, if they're vaccinated, antigen testing. And so <clears throat> once they have cleared, the cruise vessels will be required to send some meets in advance, all their onboard protocols to us mm. for a review and acceptance. And so all cruise um, staff, their crew and passengers will be required to be vaccinated, fully vaccinated, as Dr. Mark explained. Mm. Fully vaccinated means you have taken both doses mm. two weeks prior to travel. And then he mentioned the other things. Now, upon arrival, the same protocols will apply, like wearing your mask, physically distancing, hand hygiene. And once you get off the vessel, you'll only be granted permission to leave the vessel if you have a pre-approved tour. So that is an important thing for all tour operators, taxi operators, to note that you have to have that cruise passengers to disembark they will be required to show proof of a pre-approved tour. Um, once they show that, um, we have set up, <clears throat> as Dr. Mark said, we set up Ministry of Tourism, a mini cruise village, where we'll have different signage and different sections for where you go. If you have a pre-approved tour, you would be able to go there and meet your tour operator and proceed to your tour. Um, then, well, proceed to your tour, you're safe in nature, certified um, taxi or transportation. And um, once you have completed your tour, you return to the, um, um, to the port, and then you'll be able to um, leave the port. So it's very important for the tour operators to note that in the first instance, and to ensure the safety of all, and, and that is a requirement not from Dominica necessarily. It is from the cruise ships that are requiring that um, that all passengers who disembarked will have pre-booked tours. But so and, and so we have these special arrangements for cruise passengers. How do we how do we um, how are we preparing our frontline personnel? Uh, to deal with these expected arrivals? I mean, both you and Dr. Mark could, could weigh in discuss on, on this question. PM, we have been doing a lot of work um, during this long time period. Certification is the key. As you know, we launched the Safe in Nature certification program, and we have extended it beyond hoteliers. So tour operators have been trained. Vendors have been trained, both in Rosa Valley and the Bayfront vendors, taxi operators, the operators. To date, we've, we've trained over 200 people in respective fields on how to vend in a COVID environment, how to interact with passengers in a COVID setting. Well, well, you know, as a precaution because of COVID. And so we are also retrained vendors on, we are also requiring that 
that they meet the NICE standards, the National um, Certification of Excellence standards that we're requiring our stakeholders to meet as well. We also did a lot of training with the Caribbean Tourism Organization in customer service, in um, quality control, and in also we exposed some of our stakeholders to e-transactions, e, um, e which is also going to be critical going forward. As, as you mentioned before, many passengers are looking for cont contactless and environment to do transactions. So it's very important that going forward, we continue the training in doing e-transactions. E so it's important for our stakeholders to get on board. And so we've done a series of consultation as well with our stakeholders, with vendors, taxi drivers, tour operators, tour guides, to tell them on the expectations once cruise tourism returns, to share with them the proposed cruise protocols so they're well acquainted with it prior to the arrival of cruise vessels. No, no you're saying that um, for the cruise passengers to disembark, they must be vaccinated, is that correct? Yes. That's correct, right. And, and, and so the, herein lies the question about our own vaccination and, and, and those who are involved in the tourism industry. Um, where are we do on the vaccination of the, of the frontline tourism um, stakeholders, uh, the vendors, the, the, the bus drivers, the tour operators, uh, the tour guides? Yeah, um, you know that the Ministry of Tourism has gone on a massive um, campaign to ensure that our stakeholders understand the importance of getting vac vaccinated in order to partake in cruise tourism. We have about 943 stakeholders in the sector, which is made of vendors, air bridges, taxi drivers. To date, 51% of our stakeholders have been vaccinated. And so we are continuing this effort. Um, you may have seen that we have a massive um, campaign on Tuesday on the, on the Bayfront, at Bayfront office between 9 a.m. to noon. And that is targeting our stakeholders. Because if you are not vaccinated, you will not be able to partake in cruise activities. There is one cruise vessel that proposed that if you're unvaccinated, that in order for you to be able to carry passengers or to go on a, on a tour, in, in order for a tour operator to have passengers on a tour, you'd have to get a PCR test weekly. And that, that might be a big challenge because number one, um, you'd have to book it, you'd have to get the results on time, and you'd have to pay for the PCR test. But now you have, all stakeholders the have the opportunity. Are, the are free. The vaccine is free. And I want to emphasize that it is free. Take advantage of it. It helps, it, it helps reduce all the stresses related to ensuring that everyone is safe if we all get vaccinated. It makes life much easier for both the travelers coming to Dominica and for people operating in Dominica. Now, will there be checks, though, in place to ensure that service providers are vaccinated uh, before the look vote? I know you indicated we're having a massive um, vaccination drive on Tuesday, is it? Yes. Yeah, Tuesday. Correct. And, and, and that will be continued, Dr. Mark? Yes, it will. And even on Saturday p.m., we also have another program which we intend for even the Bayfront and some of the bus stations. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the two questions, the one is from WhatsApp and the one is from Facebook. The first one from WhatsApp is saying, good evening, p.m., what safeguards are being put in place against the possibility of persons presenting fake vaccination certificates? Okay, so p.m., that is a, a very ticklish situation, and um, it's not an easy one. It's very, that's a challenging one. However, what we've done is we've had samples from most of our Caribbean yes. islands so that we have an idea of how their vaccination certificate looks like. Mm -hmm. And also, we, on all of these vaccinations from the other region, region and um, countries in the region, we see the signatures, we see the stamps, so we have an idea of how it looks like. But obviously, in today's world of technology, there's always a little gray area and, um, but we've definitely got all of these from the region and even some of them internationally just to see what it looks like so at least we can compare and, com and contrast and our staff 
they have been fully informed of that and they're pretty much aware of that there is a possibility of getting an effect. Just the same way it was initially with PCR results. So, but we, we are fully aware of that and we've definitely been educating our staff. Those are the airports so we can identify or we can have an idea which one looks fake. That is where the symptomatic and the questionable cases comes in. That if we see a questionable um, vaccination certificate, we do a rapid antigen test. So we have a line of defense for yes. that. That is our plan B for this. If we suspect something is not genuine, then immediately we do a rapid antigen test. Mm. Yes. Okay. Now, earlier we, you mentioned the inoculation rate of 41%, over 19,000 people um, vaccinated with, with single dose, and I believe close to 14,000 um, with the second dose. Correct. Uh, what additional activities we strategies we're using to get the numbers up because there's a there's the issue of vaccine hesitancy which is a global phenomenon um, but what are what are we doing here in Dominica though to 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 increase these numbers in, in, in a quicker time okay well first PM let me just um, thank the public and those who've taken their vaccines those who've been proactive and those who participate in our rollout because relative to the rest of the Caribbean islands, we've done exceptionally well. However, we have to continue because obviously our aim is to see if we can get to herd immunity and the more of us that vaccinated is the better for us as regards to our economy and opening up as we see the tourism sector. But so what we have done, we've been trying to encourage people, whether it's with the WhatsApp messages, whether it's the PSAs, whether it's we get it, we even get into the marketplaces and even to the bus stop places. Sometimes we have All Saints University open on a Saturdays. We've been trying to encourage people. You must have heard about the whether it's the Coco T one or whether it's the KFC one that we had um, Honorable Blackmore in his constituency, and we also had one in the Honorable Charles constituency where we did it at the um, the community center. So we've been going out and we're trying to bring the vaccine to the people because sometimes people might be hesitant to get to the health center, whether it's for transportation reasons or they might have some other things to do on that particular day. So we decided, you know, let's just get out to the people, we'll bring the vaccine to the people and that will continue. So we, and we have all the different messages, whether it's from our entertainers and our artists, whether it's from our sportsmen, and we're just trying to get the information out as much as possible. And even us parliamentarians, we've been talking to our different groups in our community to encourage them. So it's a, a very comprehensive approach we're having um, to encourage people to take part in the vaccination. And um, so far, um, we've done pretty well, but we, we need to do better than that. I think the more of us that can get vaccinated, the better for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, there's another question uh, with regards to non-vaccinated children traveling with fully vaccinated parents. Right. How do we treat this, these um, children? Okay, so since none of the vaccines have been recommended for those below 18 as yet, there's I mean, a lot of research going on regarding that. But we consider them as a court because they're, tra they're traveling with their parents. And if their parents are vaccinated, obviously their parents, the chances of them getting infected is less. The, tran the chances of them transmitting is less. So that forms a little cohort between the parents and the children. So these can stay together. However, after the two days when we test the parents, if they have come in, they have been vaccinated, the kids also we can deal in a likely way. So that cohort, we've been taking care of that, and so that's not an issue. Yeah. Now, Dennis, uh, uh, we are welcoming cruise uh, passengers back in Dominica June 6. Um, what, type, what type of preparations has the Ministry of Tourism engaged, been engaging with its stakeholders in preparation for the arrival of these tourists in terms of activities, uh, the various sites? Uh, Yes, um, PM, we've, as I said, we really utilize our downtime besides, um, besides doing site visits and our plan to upgrade um, a, a many of our natural sites, attraction sites, especially the top 15 sites. We have a plan to upgrade the top 15 sites, which is mostly visited by cruise passengers. Um, and so like Titu, Titu Gorge, Trafalgar Falls, and then we also have Fanny Falls. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dominica is really the place to be um, for the summer because, as you know, since the, pan the pandemic, P 
people have gotten to appreciate nature more. And people are looking for uh, an opportunity to travel in a destination where there is not mass tourism, where they can have more privacy and socialize with their family and friends. So we've done a lot of work in terms of, as I said, training our frontline workers to get ready so they know how to handle um, visitors when they return on shore. We have an aggressive plan to upgrade our site and make sure it is prepared to handle any situation that might arise. We will have safety wardens on site um, to take temperature checks and, and to deliver anybody who falls sick. And we also have, we also developed a plan to have a mini cruise village. And this cruise, cruise village will be well organized. There'll be an area for tour operators, taxi drivers, for vending, for if a, a passenger just wants to relax and enjoy some of our, not our foods and have a drink, all that will be available right in the cruise um, village. We also plan to ensure that every, every operator who will be partaking in tourism activities will need to have a valid certificate, safe in nature certificate. So you need a license to operate tourism. And so you'd have to visit DDA to make sure your license is in place and you have done the required training. So we will be doing a lot of checks and balances on that. We also are thinking of having uniform, safe in nature uniform, because it is very important as a destination that we present ourselves properly to um, visitors to our shows. We have to be well dressed, we have to be well groomed, um, because that is the first impression of anybody coming to Dominica, whether you're a taxi operator, to operator, you have to be well groomed. So we'll be doing that. And once you get there, we know that the Rosa Valley is the health and wellness capital. You have T Gwen Blue Show, you have screws, you have tears, and all bongo baths and all the wonderful facilities up there that I must say have done an excellent job in renovating the accommodation or their sites post Hurricane Maria hats off to them and sustaining it throughout the pandemic. And then I mentioned the other main sites, you have Mon Bruce. So there's a lot to do in the Nature Isle um, once we reopen fully for all visitors to come. Sure, thank you. Now, Dr. Mark, we spoke about the, the protocols in place for fully vaccinated people. Um, I just want us to reiterate um, the protocols for travelers who are not vaccinated. Okay, so for travelers who are not vaccinated, the same applies in the sense that you must fill out the online questionnaire at least 24 hours before arrival in Dominica. Secondly, you must have a PCR swab at least 24 to 72 hours before arrival in Dominica. And then you'll be given travel clearance. When you fill out your questionnaire, then you've uploaded your PCR, a negative PCR, then you can be given clearance to come to Dominica. But when you do come to Dominica now, since you're not vaccinated, you will have to go to government quarantine or a safe in nature certified property for a minimum of five days, which is when we do the five-day testing. As a matter of fact, most of the cases we've got so far, even the four we have now, is on the five-day testing. So it won't be two to three days for these people, PM. It will be five days, a minimum of five days. Yes, yes. some people have been asking um, about the measures that we put in place or that will be applied to unvaccinated travelers from high-risk countries. Right. How, how do we treat them? So if you're unvaccinated and you come from a high-risk country, mm -hmm. you will be placed in government quarantine or you are safe in nature property, and your PCR test will be done on day five. If you were vaccinated, we would have done it on day two, as I mentioned earlier. But since you're not vaccinated, it will be done on day five because, PM, these people are more likely to get infected and these people are more likely to transmit the virus. So we've been highly precautious here. You're not vaccinated. We'll do your PCR on day five. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, a, a safety, that's our safety net there for such people who are not vaccinated. Okay. Now, there are some of our citizens who work with the airlines um, as airline crew. Uh, we have also reviewed the protocols for Dominican airline crew who have had to quarantine on their, on their off days, uh, which has caused them uh, grave inconvenience uh, and maybe even one or two of their jobs. Uh, 
can we speak to the new protocols that will be put in, that, are, that are in place um, for this airline crew people? Um, as a matter of fact, I think this would work very much in their favor in the sense that mm -hmm. here you are an airline crew, you maybe get about five days, sometimes six or seven days off. And then if you were to spend your entire five or six or seven days in quarantine, it might not even make sense to come home on your days off. So with this new protocol, and since they are mandated to be vaccinated, since they're airline crew, then it'll just be two days. And they would have as many days, whether it's with their family, their friends, and they can socialize, get out in the community. So I think it's a major, major benefit for them. It's a game changer for them, definitely. Yes, thank you. I just want to, sorry, I just want to remind the listeners that you can call 225-3400 uh, or 611 uh, 6113400. 225-3400, 611-3400. Do I suspect you're more in a listening mode? To, to follow these new protocols uh, uh, tonight. <laughs> um, now, we have the, what about the protocols? Is a phone call? Wow, you see? Uh, yes, uh, I have a Hello? I have a question. Hi. Is it possible to know how many cycles the standard piece of that is being admitted to Delmonica is being run. No, can you repeat your question, please? Yes, when you do a PCR, yeah. uh, there, there's a choice. Is it possible to number of repetitions that you okay. make? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mark, please. Okay. Um, I suppose you're referring to the, the CT level, the CT mm -hmm. um, the threshold, the cycle threshold. Obviously, the higher the cycle threshold is the more likely you'll get a positive PCR test. And obviously, it's inversely proportional to the viral load. So I do get your point. So we've been using 35, in some cases 36, which is a high cycle threshold. That means the chances of us getting a positive would be higher. And that would mean also the viral load would be lower. That means the person would be less infectious. Granted, if the person has had COVID before, then obviously the chances of getting a positive PCR with a cycle threshold of 35 and above will be much higher. So in such cases, when we get such cases and they're in isolation, we repeat this th um, the PCR test. And if the PCR test comes back positive at that same CT threshold, we can assume that was an old infection or we can assume that the person was um, vaccinated. That is why we got that um, positive test. And that person will be released from isolation at a much earlier time as compared to before. Um, obviously, some countries do use a cycle threshold of 20, and um, some use 25 and 30, which is much lower. But um, we use 35, and we're in the process of adjusting. As I said, we're very pragmatic with our approach. Mm -hmm. And as time goes along, even on the 31st of May, we'll be reviewing the entire protocols so, but I do get your point, and that's the explanation for your point. And we've done, we've made um, adjustments to that, that if at all you had a PCR positive on a high CT threshold, which was 35 and above, we can repeat it. Not we can, we do repeat it. And if we were to get the same thing within a day or two days, actually, or three days, then that person, it most probably was an old infection, or the person has been immunized. And then that person, although positive, will not be infectious. And then we can clear this person, if that answers your question. Good. Very well. Thank you. Now, the, the new protocols also consider uh, the Dominican seafarers, particularly the longhouse port. Uh, how have we accounted for this group? Um, PM, this group, it's, uh, it's a group that's dear to our heart in the sense that from the beginning, all throughout the pandemic, they have been transporting all our agricultural produce yes. and um, they have kept us afloat. 
and that is so important for our economy. So, and we obviously understood the shortcomings of they having to quarantine on, on a pot, so to speak. So the circumstances would not have been the best, and um, we felt for them. So what we have done is that we want them to fall within these two days. So at least, even if they were to come, two days, they get tested, and they can go home to their family and their friends and their community. But for this to happen, they have to be vaccinated. So we made a special effort, and some of them were vaccinated already, but a couple Saturdays ago, we went to the Longhouse Port in Portsmouth, and we actually vaccinated 19 of our seafarers, and we already had some that were vaccinated. And we're going to continue to vaccinate them, so they're going to fall within these two days. Life will be much more comfortable within two days. They're out, and they can go to their family, as opposed to, say, in five, six, seven days on the Longhouse Port. So we've definitely accommodated them. They were very receptive to the vaccine, and we really appreciate that, and we're going to be there again. And um, so we'll continue to vaccinate all our seafarers so that we get a herd immunity among our seafarers. They come home two days, and they're free to go home to their family. And what about the yachts as well? Is it similar? The, the yachts as well is very similar. We're having all those protocols, and we've put them in place, and then we've been checking them. So if they're vaccinated as well, they come very much under this category. If they're not vaccinated, well, they fall under the unvaccinated. So basically, we have two categories. You're either vaccinated or you're not vaccinated. And we deal with you. We have the general protocols for each of these categories, and um, you have to fall in one of the categories, which is even more reason why we should get vaccinated. Now, uh, as I've indicated, and of course we all share this sentiment, uh, there's always a risk factor. I mean, if there's also always a risk factor. Uh, nothing is 100% foolproof, and so forth. Um, so with these new measures, there are risks associated, and we're mindful of that. Uh, but Dr. Mark, how, how confident are we, though, in, in the systems that we're putting in place, these new protocols? Um, <clears throat> well, PM, the, the thing is, with these new protocols, for one, we've put the safety, the health and the safety of the people first. And um, we've taken all the scientific data. We've also taken a look at the best practices of other countries. Mm -hmm. We've also seen the errors and the mistakes made by other countries as well. And when we put all of this together, we, I think these are safe enough. I think we've put quite a bit of um, plan Bs and precautionary measures along the line. As a matter of fact, previously a low or medium traveler would have maybe just had an antibody test and would have gone home. In this new protocol, if our antigen, if you're low or you're medium, we do an antigen test, which is more specific and more sensitive for the virus. So if you ask me, this is even safer for low and medium travelers. Mm -hmm. And um, for the high-risk ones, as we said, we've kept our five-day. And as you see, our five days, the, the part of the protocol that have been catching all these cases that we're getting. I mean, so when we talk about active cases, no, I must remind you that these are not in the community. These are cases we trap at the airport and in five-day quarantine. So I, I think the measures are pretty much okay, PM. So I think we feel safe. There's a, there's a caller on the line. Hello? Good evening, Mr. Prime Minister. Hi, good evening to and you. And good evening to your guests. I, I, I tuned in a little late, and I didn't get the first part of the program, so I'm not sure if you've said it before. But I just wanted to find out, for persons who are fully vaccinated coming in, when does the two-day quarantine period take effect? Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, the new, the new, the new protocols. Change. Well, the new protocols will take effect on, on Wednesday morning, Wednesday of this week. Wednesday of this week. Um, so we are, we are finalizing all, the, all of the administrative uh, matters. Uh, the cabinet has, in fact, approved them. And um, they'll come into effect on Wednesday. Okay? Uh, now, please, another caller. Please, caller. Hello? Yes, good evening. Yes, sir. Welcome. Yeah. Um, what you may want to lower down the volume on your television or your, or your radio and, and ask your question. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, what I would like to ask, what I would like to ask is... Yes. Just... Uh, yeah. Yes. This, what I would like to ask is even more than 
Even more than she's coming to the United States. And she has two kids in her. She is fully vaccinated. And one of the kids is 12, and the other three. What procedure is it? Okay. Yeah, I mean, that question was asked and was answered, but I will allow Dr. Marcos to reiterate the, uh, the response. Sir. Okay, so, yeah. so if, Thank the, you. If, if the mother is vaccinated and she's accompanied by her two kids, so they form a cohort, so the mother will be treated as a vaccinated one where she goes to quarantine for two days and um, on the second day, as we mentioned, she would have a PCR test. Likewise, her children would have to be with her in quarantine because they form a cohort. Um, the mere fact that she's vaccinated, her chances of getting infected and her chances of transmitting is much less. But nonetheless, her children, if her, they form a cohort and then we'll deal with them as a group. So it still remains the same two days in, um, in, in quarantine. And then within 24 hours, you'll get your PCR result. Mm -hmm. So at most two and a half days, not yeah. more. Okay, good. Thank you, Dr. Now, <clears throat> on which has, there are some concerns in the public about the restarting the tourism industry of tourism activity, rather. Um, how do we reassure our population of our ability to maintain safety? PM, I want to e echo your sentiments. We have done an extraordinary job in the management of this virus to the extent we have no community spread. That is a major achievement. And so, with the new protocols in place, by having safety wardens, at all our attraction sites. Um, we have, a, by ensuring that they strict adherence to certification. So if you are not safe in nature certific certified, you do not have your license, you will not be able to partake. As I said, you have to be vaccinated. That is our goal, to ensure that we create that herd immunity among tourism stakeholders. And then we also have a safe in nature monitoring group made up of private and public stakeholders who will constantly review to ensure that everything is going according to the plan. So I think based on our record of managing this virus and how we have kept our people safe, that we are ready to restart cruise tourism. A full call, please. Hello, good evening. Yes, hello, good evening. Yes, sir. Um, if I'm a, a qualified bus driver and I have taken my vaccine, I heard you out there earlier that the doctor said only for a talk when from the ship that the bus driver has given an opportunity to negotiate a private talk mm. with the push department. The push department. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. The 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 cruise lines. Are, that means that the cruise lines are the only one with the opportunity to make money on on the shore. Pre booked private. And if you are not registered, if you're not registered with one of the operators, then you are a lot. Well, well not quite, no, no, no. I'm um, not quite so. I, I understand your um your concern there. There, there, there are two, two parts of this. Um, one is the organized stores. Uh, so that, that, isn't, that, that, is, that has always been in place and that will continue to be, to be in place. And as you know better than me, there are people who also have their private stores. What, what is being said is that the private stores will be allowed, but they have to be pre-booked. What, what, what is being, what we're seeking, all of us are seeking to, and I'm sure yourself, is seeking to avoid is the, and in, in this, in this current situation in the pandemic, is to have um, tours be negotiated on site. So the tourist comes off and then he's going to negotiate with someone to go somewhere with him and so forth. And, and so with regards to the contacts and so forth, what I have said to the Ministry of Tourism is to ensure that uh, uh, that people who are not part of the Combined Taxi Association and, and their persons, as we know, and certainly you, may, you, may, you sound like one of them, um, who do their own private tours, that the Ministry of Tourism, DDA, 
um, needs to have a, a list of these people and to ensure that in the process, um, taking into consideration all of the protocols, that everybody can eat a bread um, as a result of the activities. So it's important for you to be in touch with the Ministry of Tourism and DDA and, and to ensure that your name is, is properly and, and your, your information, your data um, is, is known uh, to all and so on. But they will be allowed free booked private tours. And I know some of you have your Facebook pages and you have your contacts um, and people know they're coming to uh, meet you. Uh, or meet your colleague, and so these things will be, will be allowed and so forth. But obviously, with these new protocols in place, there are certain considerations. But so we are aware of this, and we have um, engaged the cruise lines in that regard, and, um, and, and so the private tours will also be facilitated as well. Okay, I, 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 did I get that correct, um, Yes, PM, and, and PM is very important for stakeholders to understand. Is some of the cruise ships... Um, they are requiring, one of the requirements is that a tour guide has to be on the tour mm -hmm. with the passengers. So there are many guidelines and, 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 and um, different protocols that has to be followed. So to avoid all that and to avoid any chaos, mm -hmm. when the cruise vessels get here, the, 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 what, we, what they have said to us is that in the first phase, because this is happening in phases, mm -hmm. the first phase in summer where we're starting, so we're being extremely cautious in our, with our approach to ensure the safety of all. So in the first phase, yes, that you have to ensure that it's pre-book private tours, as you rightly said. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have to be certified. You, know, you have to be safe in yes. nature, certified, yes. and you have to meet the nice standards. Nice you've been doing those trainings. If you've not been part of it, I encourage you to contact Discover Dominic Authority Office so you can be trained and get fully acquainted with all the requirements and protocols. It's very important. Thank you. Thank you. So, so we have to continue providing the information uh, as we go along. Now, as of now, though, uh, Dennis, what does the schedule for the cruise season look like? I mean, it, looks, it looks good for us. Um, in June, we have about two calls. In July, about four. And it progresses. But I want to emphasize here that in order for us to receive more calls in order for us to be steady on the rotation of cruise ships. Vaccination is key. As you're well aware, every week we have to report how many people have been vaccinated in our island to, the, to our cruise partners. And, and that makes a difference and determines how many calls a destination will get. Mm -hmm. And that is why it's very important, as we say, in order to really get a, a, a good restart of tourism in order to continue to promote Dominica as one of the safest, it is already, but to continue the promotion of our country as one of the safest destinations in the region. So partners feel comfortable in recommending their people to go here, even countries, recommending their residents to visit Dominica. Vaccination is the key. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Mark, any final thoughts? Well, PM, I think we've, we've played our part in the sense that um, we've put together the best possible protocols, um, keeping in mind that we want to keep the, the country as safe as possible. We, um, we know that, obviously, when we relax protocols, um, people are concerned about um, whether the safety is being compromised. But in this particular case, no, I think we've done pretty well in putting a nice, solid um, change in protocols and the relaxation. And we have to admit that, obviously, the, Car the Caribbean is maybe, um, not maybe, but Caribbean is the most tourism-dependent region in the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, apart from that, when we hear about travels, we know how porous our borders can be, and we know what, how the interconnectedness of the CARICOM member states. So we, we understand all of these um, dynamics. But I think we've put a, a good protocol together, and it's up to the public now to just come on board and let's get vaccinated. If we can get, get vaccinated with such tight protocols, I think we can remain safe as we've been all along. So my word to everyone is let's get vaccinated. We can see the benefits and the advantages of getting vaccinated. Thank you. Um, Dennis, any final thoughts? Please? Yeah, as I said, we have come a long way as a destination in the management of COVID with lockdowns, border closures. It is critical now 
that as we continue, health and safety has always been the main priority, the top priority of this government, and it continues to be. Now is the time that we need our citizens, our residents, to join us in this extra defense against COVID by getting vaccinated. Because we all are aware the impact the closures have had on our economy, whether you're a taxi driver, whether you're a farmer, whether you're a year breeder, a utility provider, the lack of economic activity has impacted all of us. So we need to get our hotel rooms full again so there'll be an increase in the demand for goods and services. There'll be an increase in job opportunities because more people will be hired. For example, you have Jungle Bay, who has completed the second phase of Jungle Bay, which is very lovely, and wants to hire 80 people. But in order to reopen Jungle Bay, we need visitors to our shores. So this is the opportunity, especially for our young people who have not gotten vaccinated, because many of our seniors have gotten vaccinated. The challenge is with our young people who always ask me for jobs. This is how we're going to get more jobs in the economy. Join us in this fight. Let's get vaccinated and let's give out the economy the real boost that it needs. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, we have vaccines uh, to vaccinate um, thousands of our citizens. It is free of charge to you. Um, let us play our part. We want to get back to a state of normalcy. Um, you know, people are excited about the return of this of, of, of cruise ships um, and cruise visitors because there are many people who understand um, the importance of this to their livelihoods and to their sustenance. Uh, and, and therefore, we all need to play our part to get to help them get back to um, earning um, in, a, in a way that they did pre the pandemic. And of course, we need to uh, have more revenues in the country so we can, as a government, continue to do more uh, for our people as we seek to improve the, the standard of living of every single uh, Dominican. So let's play our part. Uh, we recognize that the government is taking some bold um, decisions with the review of the protocols. These are necessary, these are important, but always mindful of the safety of our citizens and residents. And, and, and I can say to you that there were some of us who wanted um, to have uh, one day quarantine, uh, 24 hours quarantine for visitors and, and, and Dominican citizens who are fully vaccinated. And the Ministry of Health was very, um, was very firm in saying day two would place us in a much more comfortable situation. And uh, we accept this. And so this is why we're going to the day two. And we are putting systems in place administratively with the resources, the testing capacity. As you know, we have been uh, testing on the weekends, doing the swabbing and testing on the weekends, which was not something that was happening in the earlier days. Uh, but for the last several weeks now, we have had that in place. And I think things are moving much smoother than they were uh, where testing is concerned, especially for people who, who have to, uh, to depart our shores. So let's do what we have to do. I had a pretty engaging weekend as um, I went on a hike with, with so many young people um, from Sufre, um, from the State College, and also from um, uh, New Birth uh, Church. Uh, and, and for me, it was a wonderful uh, privilege to have been in the presence and in the company of so many young people, um, enjoying nature and, and enjoying what Dominica has to offer. And, um, and getting to better appreciate uh, the importance of getting out of the home and, and being out in the open. And, and certainly, as I said to them, I look forward to today um, confirming the next um, hiking date, and I will, I will certainly, I'll certainly come. This one was, was, was not easy. We walked from, from the Sufre Catholic Church up the track to Galleon. Um, you know, this track to Galleon would take you about 30 minutes. Um, I think then it took you about 50 minutes um, to go up the, the, this, this track there, and uh, it, it, it's, not, it's not easy. Um, it, is, it was a bit, bit challenging, but, um, but we made it, and, and I think the young people are, are, are certainly happier um, now than they were. And of course, I attended an address, um, the Labour Women's Organization Southern Zone Symposium that was held in Granby. It's always for me a pleasure to be 
with the women within my political party, the Dominican Republic Party, and, and um, you know, um, I have so much love for, for them and for what they do um, for this party and appreciation. And of course, this afternoon before I got to the, my, my office to have this Anupali episode, I, I, I um, went to uh, socialize with the, my friends and family from Bacatel and, and Fonseca and Fab and Stowe and, and, wow. and, um, and all the wonderful people there of the finals of the, of the Buffer Point uh, softball cricket league and it was a wonderful afternoon uh, interacting with people there, such lovely people, warm people uh, and, and very hospitable and, 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 and certainly just to say to my friends in Fab and, and Francis Jean, I look forward to coming to see you uh, sometime soon. Of course, in Bagatelle, we'll be commissioning the health center very soon. And, and of course, um, the, the bridge that you spoke about for so, many, so, for so often is finally in place. And, and, I, and my interaction with you this afternoon, I got a distinct impression that you, you're very grateful for those investments. Obviously, we'll continue to work with you to improve your lives um, as we work together. Uh, let us go forth, my dear friends, and to serve our God and serve our country. This is our country to build. Let us be constructive. Let us be positive. Um, let us all set goals um, and determine where we would like our country to be in the next 10, 15 years. And ask, ask yourself, what is, what is going to be my contribution? Uh, this government needs all hands on deck. This country needs all hands on deck in a constructive, positive way. We will not always agree, but why should we always disagree? You know, we can agree on some points and disagree on, point, on some points. But we must not give the world the impression that we disagree on everything, which is not the case. And I think we have to, some of us have to uh, reset our, our mindset and um, understand that uh, we have to be constructive and positive. Um, being negative is not going to grow the economy. Uh, being negative is not going to create jobs. Being negative is not going to take you from where you are to a higher level. It is by being engaged, by being constructive, by, by being determined and by being committed sincerely to your country. Uh, we can all talk, but if we're not going to put our hands to action and our words into action, then the words really are just words. Um, so let us work uh, to build this country. The uh, succeeding generations uh, are looking to us, and we have to bequeath a country better than how it was bequeathed to us. That's what life is about. Um, so let us work together. Um, this pandemic has been difficult for many, uh, but we are overcoming. Uh, we have faith, and we have faith in the Lord, and we have faith in our, our abilities. And once we have faith in the Lord and we have faith in our abilities, we can overcome. Um, many felt that we will never overcome the impact of Hurricane Maria and see where we are, notwithstanding even the pandemic. 226% um, of our GDP affected, over 90% of our homes destroyed, all, every business was affected. Um, every single family in Dominica was affected. And we were able to, to, to recover in, in rapid, rapid speed. You know, there are many who felt that it was going to take us 10, 15, 20 years uh, to rebuild because we had lost everything that money could buy. Um, but we, we uh, cut ourselves, we regrouped, and we were determined to, to um, respond. To this disaster and we did and we give God thanks for this and, and praise for this so they're not they, we, we know what adversity is in this country and we know what it takes to overcome them and as your Prime Minister as the leader of this country I am absolutely committed 100% to this country and to its welfare and, and the welfare and well-being of the citizens and residents um, it's not easy it's not easy um, to ask but um, it has to be done nonetheless. I, I, um, I also, um, this week, had to um, be in court, as you know, to answer to, to a charge. Um, but uh, I, I leave this in, in the hands of the Lord, and I am reinforced always by Psalm 35. So my um, request of you tonight, all of you, is to read Psalm 35 and to really reflect and ponder on, on, on the words and, and the sayings in Psalm 25. God bless you. Let us always look at the glass half full rather than half empty. And uh, by, it's only by being grateful, more blessings will come your way. 
And it is the Lord who giveth and the Lord who takes it, take it away. And in everything, we give him thanks and praise. Good night. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mr. Benji, cultural ambassador and lead singer for TK International. COVID-19 has hit my livelihood very hard. No large crowds means no shows. No live performances means no CO. I want to get back to doing what I love to what you love. Let's get back to 13. I can only get back on stage if we all take the vaccine. Get back. Mr. Benji said so.